Hey guys, welcome to the stream and welcome back to Abandonware Adventures. Look at that title, I love using that title. Abandonware Adventures, where we go back to a game that has been technically abandoned. Basically, if it is not on sale right now, it's it's available for Abandonware Adventure. And today we're looking at a 1997, if you can see right here, 1997 by Strategic Simulations, Dark Colony. <laughs> Dark Colony. Uh, this is a game that I played a lot of and I never finished. I never finished it. And uh, we're going to be going through some of this today because uh, I would really like to do a series on this. Now, I haven't done Dark Colony before because, um, uh, well, well, it runs in this weird window, driver window thing. So I have to full screen it, screen it. So I couldn't record it properly before because I didn't have a second monitor, but thanks to my Patreon and my patrons who support me, I got a second monitor, a cheap one, and uh, I can now see myself there and I can see the game here. Now, there's a few things in the game that I have to uh, avoid, like the Encyclopedia. Some things in Encyclopedia crash the game, so we can't do that. But we can play the intro. Now, a few notes on Dark Colony. The, actually, something that was actually borrowed, I think, pretty much from Dark Colony, is uh, the strategy game Battle for Middle Earth. You know how in Battle for Middle Earth, the Lord of the Rings RTS, there's, a, there's like a spire and you build buildings around it? I'm pretty sure that's from here. I'm pretty sure this that, that's the base building mechanic used from here. And I think, if I'm not wrong, this is where it was used first. So, but we're gonna watch the intro. Now, I have to put a warning here because I did not rem remember. Like, I played this game when I was eight to nine years old, right? This intro is surprisingly graphic. It's a 3D intro. And uh, there are heads coming off, there are heads being exploded, there are more heads being exploded. Um, there's no foul language though. Foul language is still a no-no in the 90s, right? But heads exploding... Yeah. So although the, the CGI is a little, you know, rough, uh, and it's very, very dark, um, I'm just gonna put a warning here that there are exploding heads and heads coming off. Okay. So uh, skip ahead if you don't want to see that, or just if you're watching this live, just come back in two minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna bring, take myself off the screen here, and let's go ahead and play the intro.
You see how that intro was sort of, okay, okay, it's, uh, <laughs> it's going okay, it's going okay, and then it gets a little over the top, and then it gets very much over the top. Welcome to the 90s. Uh, action, explosions, you know, marketing at boys, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what the rating was on this game, because the game itself is not that violent. Ah. <sighs> Anyway, welcome to the stream, Rob Brothers, Anand Kumar, GameTube123, Ares106, Arbalest T, Erez Spirer, and That Screaming Sheep. Welcome to the stream, hope you're enjoying it. We're gonna be going through the campaign here, and because I do actually want to... The sound balancing of this game is all over the place, by the way. Because I want to actually do a little bit of a series here, I will be splitting it based on missions, because uh, I like that. So we can play the humans or as the greys. You can play as the aliens, but I'm gonna stick to the humans here. My name is Gamer Zack, and let's go ahead and start a campaign. Minimal voice acting, it's 97. Human overview, the year is 2137 and the colonization of Mars is not going smoothly. The discovery on Mars of Petra 7, a remarkable energy source, led to the belief that, the terrafor that terraforming this planet was a viable solution to easing Earth's population crisis. Mankind's most ambitious project has spanned more than a century and has turned a sleeping planet into a thriving world, complete with lush jungles and colorful deserts. The time has come to move in. The major undertaking of colonization has been split up among a handful of Earth's largest corporations, all of which preached cooperation. The initial bases, mainly set up as mining outposts, have begun to experience strange equipment malfunctions and accidents which are severely testing the human alliances. Amidst the increasing confusion, mankind's leaders have admitted to what has been suspected for centuries, that we were not alone, and worse yet, that our alien guests have plans for us. In Earth's darkest hour, the war to save humanity is about to begin. Dark Colony was rated M for mature, says Rob Brothers in the chat there. Uh, appropriately so, but I think just because of that intro. But then again, there is red blood in the game, so I guess... In the 90s, that's mature. <laughs> it's not exactly Red Game of Thrones. Landing. Red Landing. Welcome to Mars, Commander. We have just received a distress call from one of our mining colonies deep in the Kreis Basin. The message was very broken up and I can't read that fast. Hold on. Wait, wait. Stop. How am I supposed to read this? It's... it's no. I can't scroll back. I can't scroll back up. We just gotta wait till it finishes, I guess. There's our mission objectives. Okay, uh, let's see, Christ Basin. The message was very broken up, but as we understand it, the colony is under attack by aliens. There is no time to lose. We are sending you and a small team of troopers to find out what has happened there. We will be dropping you off at one of our still functional dropship beacons that marks the beginning of the basin. There should be a few more dropship beacons if you are able to re reactivate them. We can transport in some reinforcements. Good luck, Commander. Mission objectives, reactivate the dropship beacons, locate and secure the mining colony. Commander must not be critically wounded. Transmission out. Let's get this started. To battle. I'm Lieutenant Gamerzak. <laughs> Sensors locked to the beacon, prepare for landing. Ah. So, in typical RTS fashion, first mission, no base building. Yes, sir. Left click is for select and move. Now, I should, like, slow my mouse down. DPI. Oh, that's my rocket cone saying 800 DPI. <laughs> you know, I like rocket cone, but that voice is a bit over the top, isn't it? Anyway, let's, uh, let's, go. let's keep going. All right, so there is attack move. Surprisingly, in this game, there is attack move. Look at that. Ah, oh, this brings back memories. <laughs> All right, let's kill these greys wearing yellow shirts. 
Okay, there we go. Um, Rob Brothers says this is on Mars. Uh, ask Musk where on Mars. Well, it mentioned the Kreis Basin. I'm assuming that's a real place. Uh, let's get some new troops in. Oh, we're under attack. Uh, we can inspire our troops here. Make them bleed. Come on, get to killing. I think we, we outnumber them here. Attack move is... the gunning is a bit loud. Okay. Now, I'm not able to change the volume without closing the program. The game is too loud. Okay. Um, how do I do this? What I could do... Alright, and we're back. So, we just dropped the volume during the stream. Now, we're still looking around this map. Now, I do have to mention, again, I think I mentioned this just now. This is the first game I've ever modded before. Like I actually went into the files and modded things because all of the unit stats, all of the all the characters, all the units, it's just a string of numbers. Like a string of 25 numbers, I think. Right? So it because it's just a string of 25 numbers, each number means something different. So if you just change a number and then load up the game and play, you can see how it changes. So I actually made these troopers fire tank shells at a hundred a second. <laughs> Let's go. You, you can just change the properties of all the units. You can make them flying. I, I've set like I've set the commander unit to flying, shooting tank shells at a hundred a second. It just obliterates everything from the sky. Lock it's amazing. Road. Anyway, it seems like this is a dead end. Now, one interesting thing about this game is there is actually a day-night cycle. You see down here in the lower right corner? There's a day-night cycle. And humans see further during the day, but the aliens see further during the night. It's, uh... It's quite interesting, actually. So this is 97, so this is before Windows 98. And this is... Around the same time, well, it was in development before Age of Empires 1 came out. Basically, because Age of Empires 1 came out in 97 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Come on, make them bleed. Let's inspire our troops here. How's the, the volume now? Sounds okay? We might lose a guy here. That's Micro. Pull back. Nope. He refuses to micro. Oh no, he's on attack move, that's why. Right. You got it. Lock and load. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's very difficult to micro in this Search game. Destroy. But it's okay. We'll keep going. Why aren't the greys wearing red shirts? Ah, uh, it's go. just a, the standard color is yellow. Uh, but if you play multiplayer, yes, there is multiplayer in this game. Uh, if you play multiplayer, you can pick all sorts of colors. Uh, here we go, another beacon. So this is this is 97. So before StarCraft, before Age of Empires 1, and we have hero units yes, with abilities. I just want to point that out. There are hero units with abilities in this RTS. You got it. Not a common thing back then. Let's go. All right, let's keep going. See, there's my ability. Inspire troops. And I think he actually levels up as the, the campaign goes on, and he gets more abilities. You get, like, call down reinforcements and all sorts of things. It's really cool. Let's keep inspiring our troops. So this is sort of a one-handed experience, but there are hotkeys. You can see everything is hotkeyed here. And once we get to base building, I'm going to need to use my left hand to... Because the build button is uh, spacebar. Search and destroy. Oh, we've got some aliens attacking something here. And you'll notice the commander also has uh, longer range than everyone else. All right. Ah, there we go. It just changed the nighttime. Our vision gets shorter. And the aliens get to see more. So quite often in the campaign, aliens attack at night. <laughs> Mission complete. Prepare for pickup, Commander. Oh, oh, oh. It's gonna come pick me up. You can run away from it. 
Nah, escape. Oh, come on. <laughs> It'll chase you until it gets you. Ah, oh, there we go. Cinematics. Rated M for cinematics. <laughs> ah. See, the gameplay itself is actually not that uh, violent. Good work, soldier. The dropship beacons were reactivated and contact with the mining colony, colony was reestablished. Get ready for your next mission. We got an award here. What? An award for what? Mars Theater Medal for Service on Mars. Oh, would you look at that? And we got stats. We are Pan Luma and they are the Tar. Anyway, that is the end of this mission. Let's just go ahead and click next mission. Actually, no. We're going to take a quick break here, a micro break. I will be back in 15 seconds. Thank you so much for watching. This is Abandoned Where Adventures. My name is GameZack. This is Dark Colony, an RTS from 1997, same year as Age of Empires 1 before Windows 98. Hope you're enjoying it. We'll be right back.